and Bitcoin is the solution. It is the digital gold. I think that you're seeing so many big names adopt it more and more every single day that inevitably I do see 100,000, 500,000, maybe even a million on Bitcoin, maybe five, 10 years out. And I do, I am a huge, huge long-term bull. And, and thank you for saying that because because it always bugs me when people are like, oh, he's such a bear. He hate, you know, like like I'm a huge bull on on it. I just wasn't going to pay up at sixty five thousand when I when all my charts and all my probabilities were telling me it was going to go to 20 or sub 20 thousand. I would much rather save myself that spread. And then by the time I get back to sixty five, you know, I'm up 200 percent on the trade while some people are just getting back to break even. And I think that's important to understand is that. You know, is it tr the best traders in the world are never bulls or bears. They're never perma bulls or perma bears, right? Perma meaning they're always bearish or always bullish. The best traders are just looking at the charts and the charts tell us what the probability of the move is going to be. So when we see a high probability setup, whether it's up or down, that's when we take the trade. And again, it could be up or down. doesn't really matter to us. We just want to be on the right side with the highest probability. So in looking at long term, I think there's a huge need for Bitcoin. I think that, again, if you look at what the Federal Reserve has done, I know we'll talk to the Fed in just a minute or two, but the Fed is pulling back on liquidity. But at some point, it's going to cause the U.S. to go into recession, which in inevitably will mean that they will start printing again to save things. It's going to be such a nasty recession and inflation will naturally come down in the recession uh, as I think oil will come down. You'll see that because lack of demand and therefore inflation probably comes down to four or five percent. When unemployment gets to eight to ten percent, the Fed is going to say, OK, now unemployment, which is our second mandate, is much worse than the inflation. So we need to go out and, and print more to save um, to save the, the economy. Right. So the need, the ultimate cause here is, is more printing of money will come in eventually. And Bitcoin is the solution. It is the digital gold. I think that you're seeing so many big names adopt it more and more every single day that inevitably I do see 100,000, 500,000, maybe even a million on Bitcoin, maybe five, 10 years out. And I do, I am a huge, huge long-term bull. Uh, and, and that's a great point too, because because right now it absolutely trades like a tech stock. It, it's It's got the volatility. It's a risk on stock, uh, entity, meaning that when people are willing to take risk, they'll buy Bitcoin. And we have to remember that Bitcoin's only 13 years old. It started in 2009. And then you compare it to gold. Gold's been used as a store of value for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So on a maturity basis, Bitcoin is a 13 year old. Gold is like the 120 year old, the oldest person in the world. You know, the, the amount of knowledge and kind of stability that gold brings is why you don't see the crazy moves in gold that you see in Bitcoin. Now, eventually, as Bitcoin gets older and, and, and is adopted, right? So more and more people use it, it will then start to mature into that more safe asset that actually offsets inflation and is a kind of a store of safety. So I think that's the key is that just understand that a new asset you still don't have a ton of big money in there, which actually works as a stabilizing force. I know people always say, oh, you know, the big money they manipulate. But the bottom line is big money in a stock like Apple, they're not getting freaked out when it when Apple drops 10 percent or 20 percent. Right. They're in there for the long term. These pension funds, they're going to hold Apple. And, and that's stabilizing for a stock like Apple, which still is de decently volatile. But my point is, again, that the, the more money adopts, the more people in, the more stable the asset becomes, right? So I think that's one of the keys here is you need to see adoption. You also need to see regulation. I know regulation is a horrible term in crypto, but if you ever want big money to adopt Bitcoin and start using it and, and it become more mature, you have to see some basic regulation where you can't have Terra Luna type blow ups where people lose billions of dollars and you can't see, you know, the kind of the hacking and the stealing and people are just losing their money left and right, like can happen in cryptocurrency accounts. One of my biggest things for crypto accounts is FDIC insurance here in the US. That's where if, if you get robbed, basically, the government actually is insuring your account up to a certain amount. I think that is so imperative for the crypto sector to get big money to feel comfortable in getting in. So, so you're right. And, and, and in December of last year, I think we talked and I talked about 
gold being the best performing asset in 2022 so compared to the stock market as well as to Bitcoin. And that's been true, absolutely. Now, gold hasn't been flashy, right? I mean, gold's only up a few percentage points on the year. But when you compare it to the drop in, in crypto and, and the drop in the stock market, I mean, you know, everyone wishes they were in gold since the beginning of the year at this point. Um, having said that, yes, you're right. So if we look at the chart here, um, I did talk about a pullback after we got to that double top to that 1825 ish area. We came right down and kind of retested what we call the scene of the crime, which is the breakout trend line, right? So here you had this trend line from the all time high on gold. It touched here, it touched here, you broke out. Then you came back in right there and it's held that line. So as long as this line holds, then I believe that you have major upside in gold. Again, major in gold, it's not gonna go up 20% in a day, but I do think over the course of the next six, 12 months, you would easily surpass the high year of 2070, 2075. And I think you could easily see 2400, 2500 in a year. I really do think so. Um, I think that again, gold is an underinvested asset by a lot of fund managers. And as you see kind of a market that isn't giving the returns that it used to, and I'm talking stock market as well as crypto, you're going to see more money looking for the safety of gold, which then will push the gold price up as well. So I still love gold. Um, it's still it's still a holding of mine, and and it's been a stabilizing force in the overall um, in the overall markets because of its lack of falling while every other asset has declined. There's no doubt that the Fed is trying to play catch up, which is concerning to me. Um, you know, it's it's it seems like this is the normal kind of path of the Fed. The Fed gets behind the curve. They don't react quickly to the recession. It gets really really bad. We saw this in 2008, 2009. Then they come out with stimulus and dropping interest rates, and then they overdo it. And, and I think they've overstayed their welcome with stimulus, and now they're trying to make up for it. And the problem with that is that it can very quickly cause the economy to go into recession. And that's my big concern here is that, you know, sometimes when you do something too much, you need to just take a measured approach and take it very slow and steady on the other side. Now, I understand inflation is a horrendous thing. There's so many people that are suffering due to high oil prices and high, high food costs as well. But at the same time, if you push it too much, you're going to see an economy that really slows down and that recession will come. And then you're going to see an earnings recession with stocks. That's going to create more downside in stocks. And it's going to just make things very, very tough. So I do think that the Fed is going a little too speedy here. Um, I think that by the end of this year, they're going to have to put on the brakes in total and stop raising. And even potentially, I could see next year, there might even be calls for them to to lower rates back down a little bit. I know that's crazy to think, but I do think that that inflation will start to come down significantly, not back to 2%. I've said many times that I think inflation will be sticky around 4 to 5%. But again, as soon as you see that unemployment number start to spike towards 7 to 10%, the Fed is going to feel immense pressure to stimulate the economy and start to get people jobs again. And that's it, it's a tricky situation. The Fed is the Fed created this, unfortunately, but now they have to figure out how to manage it. And honestly, I haven't seen that they've shown a measured approach yet.